Sometimes, in fact, I would say most of the time, I have a really good experience reading books. But every now and again, there's one book that just doesn't quite do it for me like I had hoped. Hey Book Dragons, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about my top 10 lowest rated books that I have read according to Goodreads. Before we get to it, make sure to like the video, subscribe to my channel, join my Discord, you know the drill. And now that we've got those bases covered, let's get right to this list. The first book on the list is Halloween Party by Agatha Christie. Uh, this is a Poirot mystery, and on Goodreads, I gave it three stars. And I really did like the story. It wasn't the best of Agatha Christie's novels, I felt. The story takes place in the later years of Hercule Poirot, and so his faculties are waning a little bit. He's having some health issues. His little gray cells don't really seem to function the way they used to, and I don't know if it was intentionally written that way or if Agatha Christie's writing had kind of started to wane as well. But the story didn't quite have the panache that Agatha Christie normally exhibits in her writing. I still enjoyed it. It's still a fantastic book, but it just wasn't the best of the best as far as her books go. So let's move on to number nine, and that is A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. I read this book in college, and I really did not enjoy my time. You know, we, we had to read it for the historical elements in it that talked about the storming of the Bastille and everything like that. And so I, I get it. I understand why we had to read it. I enjoyed some elements of it, but overall it didn't really work for me. I ended up giving it a three star, at least according to Goodreads. Thinking more about it, I would probably give it a two star. Honestly, the only thing I remember from the book was one of the characters kept a cast iron pan on the side of his chair so that he could correct his wife when she got out of line. So it, it, it implied that he would hit her with the pan if she got out of line. I'm like, what? What, what is this crap? So, you know, uh, I don't know. Some elements of the story were probably somewhat enjoyable for me, but as I remember, I didn't really care for it, and I definitely won't read it again. Let's move on to number eight, and that is The Giver by Lois Lowry. This is a dystopian novel. Uh, much of the first part of the book uh, takes place in a world that's devoid of all color. And then as you progress throughout the story, more and more color kind of seems to come to it. People start coming out of their shells, taking risks, going against the system. Uh, it, it was interesting, but I remember just feeling how dated it was, and I read The Giver after having read The Hunger Games and the Divergent series, and so The the Giver just kind of felt lacking to me. I've heard the rest of the series is good. I still probably won't read it, but it was an okay novel. I liked the movie better. I especially remember not liking the ending of the book. Let's move on to number seven, and that would be Stranger in a Strange Land by Robert Heinlein. This was the first book I'd ever read by Heinlein, and, and actually it's still the only book I've read by Heinlein. I wasn't that impressed. It was an interesting premise about a guy who grows up on Mars. He's part of a polyamorous family. They all raise him together. I, I can't remember exactly. I know there's at least two women and I think three men that are part of this collective family. He grows up there and then ends up coming back to Earth and trying to teach them the Martian ways. And it's a heavy proponent of free love, which none of that is a problem for me. I, I don't disagree with any of that. But I just didn't really think much of the overall story. It didn't really have too much of a plot for my taste, and it was just okay. 
I did end up giving it three stars on Goodreads. I probably wouldn't read it again. And I don't know if I'll read any other Heinlein books, to be honest. Uh, but if you think I should read some more Heinlein, let me know a book that you think I should read. And I might check it out at some point in the distant future. <laughs> Not anytime soon, though. Let's go ahead and look at number six. And that is The Winter King by Bernard Cornwell. I have touted the brilliance of The Warlord Chronicles by Bernard Cornwell. The entire series as a whole is absolutely magnificent. It just so happened that the first book, The Winter King, was kind of lacking for me. I still enjoyed it. I still gave it three stars. But it was a really slow burn and it kind of dragged in places and... It didn't really capture my attention too well. And in some circumstances when that happens, I might just DNF the rest of the series. But I was encouraged to listen to the audiobooks instead, and that really did it for me. So I would go back and read this series again, and I'll probably do it so that I listen to the audiobook for the first book as well, because I, I didn't do that. I read the ebook, but I think the audiobook would be a much better experience for me, and... Who knows, my rating for The Winter King may change at that point. So if I ever reread it, I'll let you guys know. But until then, my my rating kind of stands for that book right now. I enjoyed it, but I, but I do still think back to it, and I think about the things that really dragged me down about it. So let's move on to number five. And that would be Shadow and Claw by Gene Wolfe. I was really disappointed in this book. I've talked about it on the channel before. I did a review of it before. In fact, I'll leave a link to the review I did at the end of this video so that you can click on it to watch it if you want to. I did not like the character of Severian. The book started off pretty good, but then it just got more and more into the weeds and Severian's character got more and more detestable and not in a good way in my personal opinion. Uh, the detestable nature of his character did not work for me and I like morally gray characters and morally bleak characters but Severian just, I don't know, he, he just rubbed me the wrong way and the plot didn't really go anywhere. It just kind of meandered the whole book. So I did give the book two stars. I did finish the book. But it it's definitely not something I'm going to reread. And I'm definitely not going to continue with the Book of the New Sun. Uh, number four is The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. I kind of went into this book with high expectations. I knew it wasn't going to be like the TV show, so I, I knew that going into it, but I still expected to have a good time. I like haunted houses. I just felt like the characters were wooden, very one-dimensional. I didn't think the plot really went anywhere most of the time, and it did not have the thrills I was expecting to get out of it. This one might have been a case of too high expectations on my part. That happens sometimes. Uh, definitely not a winner for me, though. So let's move on to number three, and that would be Quest of Heroes by Morgan Rice. I read this book on a whim. It was shortly after I had finished A Song of Ice and Fire, or at least finished up to where it is currently. And this particular author's series had similar naming conventions to A Song of Ice and Fire for the different books. And the blurb touted it as being comparable to Game of Thrones. So I, I was just like, well, okay, you know, it sounds interesting. I'll give it a try. Oh boy, I was so sorry I did. I did finish the book, but wow, it was not good, guys. Yeah, it was not good. I have not read anything more by Morgan Rice. I really don't plan to. I've read some of the Amazon reviews for the rest of their books, and it doesn't seem like this author is very well liked. So, yeah, th this one was not a winner for me. Uh, let me know in the comments if you read the books by Morgan Rice and what you think of them. I... I was disappointed, but, you know, may, maybe other people really like Morgan Rice. So uh, let me know in the comments. Maybe you've never heard of Morgan Rice. I, I hadn't until I saw it on Amazon. So 
yeah, I bought it on a whim, and uh, luckily, I think it was only 99 cents when I bought it, so, you know, I, I bought the ebook. Let's move on to number two, and that is The Road by Cormac McCarthy. I was really bummed by this one. Uh, this was a patron pick. One of my patrons picked it for me to read, and I'd heard so many good things about Cormac McCarthy. I'd heard that The Road is a really good place to start with Cormac McCarthy, and oh, yeah, no. It wasn't for me. The characters, I, I'm a very character-driven reader. The characters didn't work for me. The story was way too bland for me. It, yeah, it just did not work, unfortunately. Let's move on to number one. And that is Outlander by Diana Gabaldon. This one had an interesting premise to me. I, I like the idea of a woman getting stranded in 1800s Scotland by way of passing through a stone in a grange. You know, it, it seemed to have this supernatural type element to it, uh, kind of magical and everything like that. But the majority of the book was just talking about her experiences in 1800s Scotland, meeting this guy who she fell in love with, and trying to find a way to get back to her own time, but the more she falls in love, the more she doesn't necessarily want to. And it just didn't really click with me. It was much more of a historical fiction novel than a magical realism novel, and I was kind of bummed by that. It, it was a fine book. I, I didn't hate it, but I, I gave it a two stars uh, on Goodreads. And it's not something I would read again or continue the series. Those are my top 10 lowest rated books on Goodreads. What do you think of this list? Are you completely appalled that I would have some of these books on my lowest rated list? <laughs> some of these books, I'm sure, are going to turn some heads. Uh, but let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know some of your lowest rated books as well and we can compare notes. <laughs> uh, until next time, guys, please make sure to read more books. I will talk to you soon.